Now, a lot of people say that Formula One motor racing these days is dull, that the days of booze and women are gone, and that the drivers are just overpaid machines who don't crash in case it messes up their hairstyle. <laughs> so they drive round in a dull procession, and afterwards they eat light pasta salads and go to bed at nine o'clock with their wives. <laughs> there are, as the Stranglers put it, no more heroes, except one. My next guest claims he scores points in the afternoon and then scores again every night. <laughs> he missed out on the World Championship this year by two crummy points. Ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Irvine. <laughs> Shall we just sit here for ten minutes and let them applaud, or shall we get going? I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I'll bet you are. How big a deal is it to be a Formula One driver for Ferrari in Italy? It's only a big deal if you're doing well. Like, the first year where I wasn't getting any results, I wasn't on the podium, I wasn't in newspapers, it was, you know, it was, uh, was kind of nice, in a way, because I walk everywhere and occasionally people recognise me, but it was no big deal. Last year, when I started getting on the podium a lot, and it started going a lot better, and then it started to be, get marginal, and then this year it's just been impossible everywhere I go. But at the same time, it's an experience that you, you have to do. You know, I'm lucky that I had one year of mega stardom in Italy, and now it, hopefully it'll die down a little bit. Um, and it's great for getting into restaurants, nightclubs, and... and <laughs> Is it like a get-out-of-jail-free card as well? Yeah. You really can't. The police just will let you off any... I remember once uh, I just bought a Lancia Delta Integrale. It was the first one I ever had. Of course, just took it out and immediately like, they're a fantastic car. And obviously I was playing with it and seeing what it could do. And I didn't realise the police were behind me. <laughs> and they were pushing like hell to keep up with me. And uh, anyway, I backed off. Next thing, this police car can pass me and sirens, arms out the window. You can imagine what irate the Italian police are like, and uh, they pulled me over and they bang on the windscreens of the car. You see the two of them bang on the windscreen of my car, I guess, and then they go... <laughs> why did you leave Ferrari? Um, or should it be, why did they sack you? It was a bit of... It was a bit of, it was a bit of both. I made it... I was um, made it quite clear that it was going to be very difficult for me to stay. Um, it says in your book that you left because you were getting too close to Schumacher. Well, basically during the season, they pretty, they pretty much realised that me and Michael were starting to get a bit too competitive with each other and they didn't obviously want that within the team. They wanted Michael to be always in total command and... You to be the whipping boy. Pretty much, and I'd had, I'd obviously, and they understood it, had enough of it. Next year, of course, you're off to um, Jaguar. Yeah. So is that like a wooden dashboard, tweed helmet, <laughs> pipe? I think that's why Jaguar are getting into Formula One, because they don't want that image anymore. Um, I don't think Jaguar can ever be as big as Ferrari, but it can be the next thing after Ferrari quite easily. Yeah. You know, I see Ferrari being the number one team in Formula One. Even if they don't win the World Championship for another 20 years, Ferrari will always still be there. Yeah. Um, because, because it's Ferrari. Yeah. But I think Jaguar can be... 30 because they've got BMW and Mercedes. It's going to be... A yeah, but they're, they're not sexy. Jaguar can be sexy. It's fantastic for Formula One. It really is fantastic. So are you going to have to live in Coventry then? Leave your boat in Portofino and, and buy a nice place in Solihull or, or, or somewhere. I, 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 no, there's no need for that. I'm, st <laughs> I'm staying put. Is Formula One boring now? I think this year was fantastic. For me personally, it was fantastic. Um, I think, I think there's a different type of entertainment going on. It's the unknown, like, how many times could you have predicted what was going to happen this year? Because yeah, what I'm saying about boring, though, is because... There's um, not as much overtaking, but you look at any cars, man, it's like watching paint dry, they go, oh. and they're overtaking each other and overtaking each other, and what is the point? It's like going fishing and catching 55 fish 
It's such a point. <laughs> you know, it's better, to it's better to sit there all day and whop into a, you know, a great white shark and you're, you know? <laughs> you know it's, uh, that's, no, you're right. That's the mentality. But what I loved about motor racing in the old days, like Le Mans, those early, early days, there was yeah, that you were dreaming, you were dreaming, it didn't exist. I've watched races from the early days. Man, the guys won by three laps. Yeah, they won by three laps, which gave, do you remember Rob Walker? He pulled into the pits as night fell one year to change into evening dress. <laughs> And then when it was dawn, he put his tweeds back on. Yeah, but he got his arse kicked probably if he was in today. You couldn't. Oh no, exactly. But overtaking, okay? How hard is it? These cars are awful to drive yeah. because you're relying totally on aerodynamics now. There's no tire on the ground, so you hit the brake so hard at the start of braking because you've got all the downforce, and then by the time you get to the corner, you're, you can you, you you can only pull one, maybe one and a half g at the end of braking, but you can pull five and a half at the beginning of braking. You know, so the, it's, it, they're so difficult to drive, and you, it's so easy to be the wrong side of the line. You know, the pressure for one is, is people don't realize I now. have a plan. Tell me. It's a great plan. I doubt it, but tell me. No, you're going to love it, okay? <laughs> all of you get paid £10,000 a year. All right, it's all you're allowed to earn, from sponsorship and everything. Mm -hmm. Million pounds a win. You then you'd bloody speed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like, oh, I can't catch up. Yeah, but you couldn't survive on that sort of money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are far too rich, all of you, aren't you? We most. I, I tell you what, the wages. Uh, the wages are going to change now. In the next four years, five years, the wages are going to go through the roof, which is great. <laughs> but, you know, there's up until this year, there's very few guys on more than. Two million dollars a year. Oh, very, very few. <laughs> but as a world-class sport, that is, you know, you'd Michael on mega bucks, then you'd. How much is he on? I think Michael's on about twenty-five, something like that. Million. Yeah. Dollars. And then you'd the next big drop to say Jack, he was on ten million dollars. You know, and then. And you were on. No, I couldn't tell, possibly tell you that. <laughs> I was on. I was on. Oh no, behave! Don't wouldn't get out of bed for that in the morning. <laughs> no, but. You know, and this, the next few years, the wage is going to go through the roof. Because you've already got the boat, the yacht. You sold the helicopter, didn't you? Why did you sell the helicopter? I was too toyed up. I was too exposed to the luxury goods market. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't using the helicopter that much because I was in Italy most of the time. The helicopter was based in Ireland. I sold it to the guy that, who works for me, Alan, he, who's, who flies the jet as well. He... <laughs> How old are you again? Huh? How old are you I'm again? I'm older than I look. <laughs> It's just sitting there, I'm just quite cross with you, that's all. <laughs> uh, you know. How many women have you slept with? I don't know. You don't know? I don't count. What's your fastest ever chat-up line? When you're famous, as you probably know, although you're very ugly, so it might be more difficult for you. <laughs> um, when you're famous, say, I don't know if you know, but <laughs> life becomes a lot easier. You could actually be, you know, you could be quite physically disabled and still, still do well if you're famous. Look at Robin Cook. <laughs> and David Meller. Good example. Yeah, we he doesn't know who we're talking about. <laughs> I'm never in England, so I don't know these sort of people. Never here. You've never heard of Robin Cook? No. <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> I haven't been in England for four years. It's five all right, years. he's foreign secretary. You might have seen him traipsing through Italy. I'm occasionally. surprised I haven't seen him in Milan then. Yeah, little red beard, not handsome. <laughs> not handsome? Him. Okay, we just get into this business of racing because I have to know this simple question. Right? The start of a race, mm -hmm. all that noise and fury and so on, and you've got to get it bang on right. Is it not scary, really properly scary, that start? No, because everything's going at the same speed as you. Well, except for the earth. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> give, or give or take, you know, maybe someone's made a better start or a worse start, so there's maybe 10 clicks difference. So yeah. you're really focused on the objects that are moving pretty much at the same speed as you. And it's only it's whenever you forget to brake and all of a sudden you're doing 100, because the car goes from 200 to 100 in like a second, then do you realise that you weren't yeah, the world's the not moving. Is it true that you see things in slow motion? 
as a racing driver? Not when you're going off. <laughs> so and so emotion until you lose it, and then it just both you realise, and that's why I don't particularly like driving at high speed. On like for me, 100 miles an hour on the road is is really is plenty, you know. <laughs> and what about Murray Walker? Course. What should we do with Murray? That's not what we should do. What should we do after he's gone? That's I know. Gonna, that's going to be because like. He makes so many damn mistakes, it's incredible, but... <laughs> but... You take, you, like, I, I've done a video, and um, we were looking at Formula One footage without his voice on. Oh, man. It's but I know, you need him. Did you see um, the private eye a couple of weeks ago, though, with best ever Murray mistake, I think. He did, he said, Ferrari aren't going to be developing the engines anymore this year. And Martin Brundle said to him, how do you know that, uh, Murray? He went, I was there when I said it. <laughs> <Good one. laughs> so you're looking forward to next year then? I'm looking forward to having a holiday first. Well, you must need it. I do. We all know. Ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Irvine. And that's it. See you next year. Why did you catch some of the best? To land, I don't want to be killed. This is it. Wave goodbye to the 20th century. Going. And I don't know about you, but I'd say that's gone. Have a great time tonight, everyone. Have a really good party. Now let's get this thing on the ground.